How crazy is it that we we talk about fights like you know we're just a bunch of dudes sitting around talking, then it becomes news stories. Oh this no! Very the, the MMA media is so bizarre. Like yeah. we talked shit about that Ken Shamrock Kimbo fight. Yeah, that became a giant fucking news story. Did you MMA. hurt Ken yeah. Shamrock's feelings? He was like, Joe Rogan shouldn't do that. Yeah, I didn't know that. Do that. Yeah. Well, well, you're a powerful dude, my man. You know what? I, what I've learned on pa podcasts and too is. You know, I joke around, I make stuff funny, exactly. but then, boom, it's a headline, I'm like, shit, I better watch what I say a well, little bit. when you joke around, also, there's a difference between listen to you talk in context of a full conversation, where there's a lot of shit talking yeah, and laughing, man, but they or take taking that. it and printing it. Yes. When it's two-dimensional, it's on paper. Like well, like Fox did an article where uh, Brian asked me on one of our podcasts, he goes, how do you think Connor's feeling right now? I went, oh, I'm sure he's terrified. You know, like ter the anxiety of fighting. Mm -hmm. They change your point, uh, opponent 12 days. It's a completely different style. You're fighting a wrestler. There's some nerves there, man. But he's terrified. Yeah. Not that he's not going to win or he doesn't believe in himself. Just naturally, everyone's terrified to fight, man. What's the article say? Brent Schaub thinks Connor's terrified. Of course. And of course. then his fans fucking just reach out to me like they want to fucking Travis Brown me. Yeah, <laughs> just fucking <laughs> intense. Yeah. Like I'm fucking Brittany Palmer. And I'm, you know, it's like brutal, man. Yeah. So, so then. You, when you, it's almost like now I don't censor myself, but you can see how people get careful. You can see how people get very sort of uh, 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 antiseptic and very sort it's of sanitized. Well, right? what was weird was what articles were being written while the podcast was going on. God, so yeah. people were sitting in front of their computer. Like with their fingers ready, Joe and as yeah. soon as we were talking about the Cam Shamrock fight, it was in podcast art in, in articles. Rather, did you get reached? Did anybody reach out to you about that, Ken, or anybody? About no. no. Look, look. I love Ken Shamrock. I'm a huge Ken we Shamrock fan, and that's one of the reasons why I was suspicious about him not being able to finish that rear naked choke underneath the neck, yeah. underneath the neck on anybody yes. uh, with a fresh Ken Shamrock. Yes. But I guess you know you have a good point that he's 51, and you know I mean look. Kimbo's not a he's not a joke, but his ground game's always been the weakest part of his game. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of issues with that fight that a lot of people had, but the big issue was there were fights in Ken's past that were absolutely worked. Jack Slack did a piece on it. Yeah, the history of it. Yeah, so Jack you're not Slack, breaking any news. I'm not black breaking any no. news. Jack Slack was one of the best writers in MMA today. He's fucking fantastic at breaking down fights. He did, I think it was called the Anatomy of a Fixed Fight, and he did. He showed fights from Pancrase yeah. that well, you watch them and you go, oh, okay, that's worked. Yeah, Funaki fight. I don't know. Well, how, how cool of an article would it be? Joe Rogan, huge Ken Shamrock supporter. Uh, They're not going to yeah. write that. Maybe, maybe they would. But they look, just sit there and wait for he, some shop talk shit about it, Reebok. It's just it was that, that was pioneer. the position that position that he had him in is maybe the hardest thing to get out of in the on the planet when you got. When you got his back underneath no. like that on top of him, if I'm just you got saying. good jujitsu, no, you know, like there's a lot of guys you get their back. Like John Fitch was notorious for like you could get his back and choke him, and he figured out a way out of it. True. Remember with Eric Silva? Eric yeah. Silva had a deep choke deep. on him, and he's like, whatever. Yeah, yeah. you know, high level guys. But let's let's, get, let, let's not get twisted. Yeah. Kimbo Slice isn't winning any exactly. jujitsu competition, yeah. so I get a little suspect. It's a little suspect. Yeah, you know, <laughs> but it's just I think that Ken is. He's in an unfavorable position. First of all, he's a real legend of MMA. He's one of the guys that started it all off. If it was for Ken Shamrock and his fights, like Ken Shamrock was huge back in the day. Huge. When before he, all UFC this crazy, one, right? even, UFC in, even two, in Japan, right before in that. In Pancrase, yeah. He makes yeah. the Mount Rushmore of MMA, for yeah, sure. He's in there 100%. So, and also, he created the Lions Den. Yeah, helped man. guys like Pete Williams Still came out of there. Him. Yeah, there was a lot of great fighters that came out of there. And that whole. Tony Galindo, there was a whole yeah. like group of guys that came up in that era, mm -hmm. you know, that w that wound up being like really big fighters, and a lot of it was under his tutelage. It's just the game's very different now. Fights, ver fights are very different. Right. You're dealing with the John Joneses of the world now. You're dealing with the Yair Rodriguez. It's, 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 the game has moved. It's a different mm -hmm. thing, and you know, Ken is not financially secure. You know, he's not a multi multi millionaire like he should be. Right. You know, if he was as a pioneer, yeah. Yeah. If he was a pioneer in any other sport, if he was a pioneer as a, a NASCAR driver, if he's a pioneer in basketball or anything like he would he's be set. set for life, sure. living in a mansion, drinking martinis by the pool, on NBC Wild World of Sports, talking about fights that are upcoming and, and treated with the respect that he deserves. Yeah. But he's in this unfavorable position where yeah. he's got to fight at fifty one years old. Ugh. And one thing that I like that he said is I've earned the right to fight for fun. And if that's what he's doing. If that's what he wants 100%, to do, 100%. I'm 100% down with that. I agree. Yeah. He, when you, 
it's almost like now I don't censor myself, but you can see how people get careful. You can see how people get very sort of uh, 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 antiseptic and very sort it's of sanitized. Weird to me. Well, right? what was weird was what articles were being written while the podcast was going on. God, so yeah. people were sitting in front of their computer. Like with their fingers ready, and yeah. as soon as we were talking about the Cam Shamrock fight, it was in podcast art in, in articles. Rather, did you get re did anybody reach out to you about that, Ken, or anybody? About no. no, look, look. I love Ken Shamrock. I'm a huge Ken we Shamrock fan, and that's one of the reasons why I was suspicious about him not being able to finish that rear naked choke. Underneath the neck, yeah. underneath the neck on anybody. How crazy is it that we we talk about fights like you know we're just a bunch of dudes sitting around talking, then it becomes news stories. Oh, I know. Very, the, the MMA media is so bizarre. Like, yeah. we talked shit about that Ken Shamrock Kimbo fight. Yeah. That became a giant fucking news story. Did you MMA. hurt Ken Shamrock's yeah. feelings? He I was did. like, Joe Rogan shouldn't do that. Yeah. I didn't know I shouldn't that. Do that. Yeah. Well, well, you're a powerful dude, my man. You know what? I, what I've learned on pack, podcasting, too, is. You know, I joke around, I make stuff funny, exactly. but then, boom, it's a headline, I'm like, shit, I better watch what I say a well, little bit. when you joke around, also, there's a difference between listen to you talk in context of a full conversation, where there's a lot of shit talking yeah, and laughing, man, but they or take taking that. it. But would it be Joe Rogan, huge Ken Shamrock supporter? They're uh, not going to yeah. write that. Maybe maybe they would, but They look, just sit there and wait for some shop talk shit about it, Reebok. It's just, was it was that, that was a position, that position that he had him in is maybe the hardest thing to get out of in the on the planet when you got when you got his back underneath no. like that on top of him Dude, I'm if just you saying. got good jujitsu no you know like there's a lot of guys you get their back like John Fitch was notorious for like you could get his back and choke him and he figured out a way out of it true remember with Eric Silva Eric yeah. Silva had a deep choke deep. on him and he's like whatever y yeah you know high level guys but let's, let's get let, let's not get twisted yeah. Kimo Slice isn't winning any exactly. jiu-jitsu competition yeah. but, so I get a little suspect it's a little suspect yeah you know <laughs> But and printing it, yes. When it's two dimensional, it's on paper. Like well, like Fox did an article where uh, Brian asked me on one of our podcasts. He goes, "How do you think Connor's feeling right now?" I went, "Oh, I'm sure he's terrified. You know, like ter the anxiety of fighting. Mm -hmm. They change your point, uh, opponent twelve days. It's a completely different style. You're fighting a wrestler. There's some nerves there, man. But he's terrified. Yeah. Not that he's not going to win or he doesn't believe in himself. Just naturally, everyone's terrified to fight, man. What's the article say? Brent Schaub thinks Connor's terrified. Of course. And course. then his fans fucking just reach out to me like they want to fucking Travis Brown me. Yeah, just fucking <laughs> intense. Yeah. Like fucking Brittany Palmer. And I'm, you know, it's like brutal, man. Yeah. So, so then, yes. oh, the, with a fresh Ken Shamrock. Yes. But I guess, you know, you have a good point that he's 51. And, you know, I mean, look. Kimbo's not a—he's not a joke, but his ground game's always been the weakest part of his game. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of issues with that fight that a lot of people had, but the big issue was there were fights in Ken's past that were absolutely worked. Jack Slack did a piece on it. Yeah, the history of it. Yeah, so Jack you're not Slack, breaking any news. I'm not black breaking any no. news. Jack Slack was one of the best writers in MMA today. He's fucking fantastic at breaking down fights. He did, I think it was called the Anatomy of a Fixed Fight, and he did. He showed fights from Pancrase yeah. that you watch them and you go, oh, okay, that's worked. Yeah, Funaki fight. I don't know. Well, how, how cool? He had 